Hey, I'm here to tell you, yes, you, that you are wrong. <laughs> this is me being outraged. <laughs> Grr. I'm so angry right now because people have a different opinion than me. I have a secret to tell you. <clears throat> this is serious. You, you are a big dum-dum. If you're in the gaming space, maybe you've also been solicited with these types of videos saying there are no good games this generation, which, in my opinion, is absolutely absurd. I can see you making this case for this perspective if you only follow along the big AAA, uh, I mean big quadruple A publishers like Ubisoft and them breaking new ranking tier grounds with Skull and Bones or EA repackaging all the same sports games every year by changing the number on the box. That takes a lot of effort, you know. What about all the other games? Even if they're not games for you, doesn't mean the games are bad. I am absolutely trash at strategy games, but people love XCOM. I can't get into it even though I've tried more than once. But there's a market for games I don't play. That doesn't mean strategy games are bad, just I'm not their target audience. I did, however, enjoy my time with the simplicity of Marvel Midnight Suns. And yes, I even enjoyed the cringy humor of the social mode in the game. I forgot what it's called, The Crypt? I got it for free on the Epic Game Store, and I have the DLC on my wishlist just because I had such a good time with it. Honestly, I can't wait to hear what stupid banter comes out of Venom and Deadpool's mouth when I do. And with a lot of the scummy practices with gotcha-like mechanics and time-consuming battle passes, those things don't plague every part of modern gaming at all. Have you played a Yakuza game? Because they're all games with very little work-like mechanics. And by that, I mean a mechanic designed to keep you addicted and coming back for rewards based on the time you put in, and you can miss out on them if you don't play them constantly. Yeah, the humor is intensely Japanese, so it won't appeal to everyone, but if you want a full, complete game at launch, check them out. The mainline games have turned into a turn-based RPG, but the games before the branding changed to Like a Dragon are all action games. Even the modern spin-off titles are still action-packed brawlers. They are even now competing with Ubisoft with a pirate game of their own, featuring the titular Majima who has amnesia. I mean. Just look at this character action like combat with pirate boat sailing mechanic. I know games have become incredibly streamlined, but how can you say there are no good games when iconic ones exist such as Elden Ring? I don't enjoy Souls games, so I haven't played it myself. But I can still look at the game and listen to people talk about it and go, man, the people Miyazaki made this game for sure are passionately loving his work of art, aren't they? I can only adjacently enjoy Souls-like combat with the wonderful Jedi games Respawn have made. Barring in mind they have some of the worst performance in recent memory of any game I've played in the past decade. Cal's story of embracing the light and darkness in him as a Jedi with incredibly slick gameplay that gives you a real crunch when cutting through your enemies with your lightsaber. In this day and age, maybe you're out of luck if you're a stealth fan. There doesn't seem to be a plethora of well-made stealth games today. I don't play them. But I knew someone who loved the stealth classics such as Metal Gear and Splinter Cell tremendously. Sadly, stealth game lovers don't seem to be eating good lately. My condolences to y'all. Remember all the crummy licensed video games of yesteryear? Well, now we got Insomniac at the wheel with some pretty solid Spider-Man games. Yes, I'm well aware of all the Spider-Man 2 discourse, but for me, I've loved all three Insomniac Spidey games. I platinum Spider-Man 2 over the weekend in 22 hours, and I loved almost every second of it. Except the MJ stealth missions. I hate those. Like I stated earlier, stealth isn't my jam. I wish there was a skip stealth missions option, but the gameplay doesn't do anything to break new ground like the Batman Arkham games did when they first released. Yet I feel Insomniac did a solid job translating what made the Arkham combat fit Spidey. His attacks are less bulldozer-like and far more agile and far more defensive options utilizing his acrobatics than just having a counter button. Also, can I just say that I'm glad games have moved away from that super monotone looking detective mode, you were never incentivized to turn it off, or else you may miss some sort of secret at the cost of making your game look like a black and white film from the 1800s. Dude, not only are the Spidey games solid, but they tell pretty darn solid stories as well. The first game especially. The first game story sold me so hard on the Spider-Man mythos, it made me start reading Spider-Man comics starting with Superior Spider-Man, 
and I'm currently almost done reading Bendis' run on Ultimate Spider-Man. It's a wonderful time if you play games just for the narrative. The way Sony Santa Monica Studio turned a God of War game from a god-killing power fantasy into a heartbreaking story about the fickle nature of love and how easy it is to go overboard and hurt the ones we love because we think we know what's good for them. It truly is a remarkable achievement if you ask me. I never expected Kratos, the God of War, to be the one pulling my emotional heartstrings. Just the physical ones on the end of my life. I'm diving into a lot of PlayStation made game territory right now and I really want to give them props for being one of the bigger influences to me this generation, but man, have you seen the love, care, and attention to detail team Asobi poured out into Astrobot? Their game is a literal love letter to the history of games that graced the PlayStation lineup up to date, and they did so with absolute reverence to the source material. And it's not just some nostalgia bait to make the game look good. The game is actually a masterful platformer with the charm of gaming history as icing on this scrumptious cake. Not only Sony, but Nintendo has too. Mario Wonder constantly throws a neat little stage gimmick every level to keep your curiosity on its toes. This is literally peak 2D platforming, and I don't know how they managed to one-up themselves so hard. Mario Odyssey pretty much doing the same thing but in the third dimension, and I love both of these games. And we also have Double Fine making bizarre, psychologically curious worlds with Psychonauts, an absolutely delightful 3D platformer with a story about people with mental powers and the mental struggles and turmoils they deal with for having them. Also, side note, but I kinda wish Media Molecule would give a 4K patch to one of their prettiest games ever, Tearaway Unfolded. This is the graphic snob in me speaking, but I'd love to traverse their handcrafted delight once again, but you know, in 4K. A quick appreciation for a genre I don't really play, but the new Call of Duty campaign is quite incredible, but man do I hate the horror inspired mission. My anxiety trembled as I try to work my way through it. The rest of the campaign though, absolutely beautifully and tightly designed so every second is filled with something engaging. I don't really play shooters for the multiplayer, but digging around online seems like people are having a good time with it. So, well done Treyarch and Raven Software. I don't play games like Fortnite or Apex Legends, but I've met plenty of people that do and love them. And it's great just to see people enjoy things. I wish Titanfall 2 didn't have to sacrifice itself to lay the groundwork so Apex could succeed, but that's just me being salty. We'll probably never get a game where we bond with a giant robot and incredibly creative levels with fluid jetpack like movements to maneuver around ever again, but you know, it is what it is. I'll be honest, I've seen videos complaining about modern day racing games, and while I can see where they're coming from, I still enjoy modern day racing games with immense passion today. I had a great time with Gran Turismo 7 at launch, I don't quite understand how they made drifting incredibly difficult on a wheel, but incredibly easy on a controller, and some of the microtransactions and the always online components are definitely a bummer. Always online requirements for games you can play solo is definitely stupid, especially since one of the most fun I had recently was with the crew too. All I did was put a podcast in the back while cruising through the entirety of the United States. I haven't played much of Motorfest, but based on my 6 hours when they had the beta, I'll probably enjoy that game too. I don't think I'll love it, but good enough is good enough for me. Also, does anyone else have a hard time doing drag races on a wheel in that game? Cause I can do them fine on a controller, but on a wheel, I don't feel like I can shift fast enough since I have to move my entire arm, and that's never going to be as fast as me tapping a button on my controller. Switching between the two is a bit of a chore, and that's partially why I decided not to dedicate too much time to that game yet. Forza Horizon 5 fixed my biggest issues with the previous games where there just weren't many good spots to drift in. I spent countless hours just drifting the hill climbs and downhills of the mountains, and the adrenaline, honestly, has never stopped. Unlike previous entries, the game now has a good amount of them, especially the few spots on the mountain, and the visuals are so tightly colored that the scenery never gets boring. On the other hand, there sadly is a lack of complete arcade racers nowadays. Maybe they're available as indie games? I haven't really looked too much into them, and it looks like we're not going to get a new Mario Kart anytime soon, which is a real bummer. The need for speed games can be a real big hit or miss lately, and we're never going to get anything as creative as Split Second ever again, which breaks my heart a little. There is a small saving grace however, if you want an incredibly fun arcade racer, check out the Hot Wheels Unleashed games. 
They feel very light and agile, almost like an actual Hot Wheels, and you're placed on tracks with tons of loop-de-loops and gimmicks fit for the Hot Wheels brand. The physics are incredibly drifty, and you're sent launching into the skies with very little air control over your car, but you can play as a toaster. To which I say, the learning curve is definitely worth getting used to. And casual fighting game fans are in for a real treat as we're finally getting fully packaged fighting games with competent single player modes and cinematic stories. And if you don't enjoy learning about numpad notations or any other technical jargon, they've got simpler control schemes for everybody to enjoy. Yes, yes, yes. One of the biggest complaints of modern fighting games is that is that they reward offensive play far too heavily and the emphasis on having good defense seems to be lacking nowadays. But this video isn't for tournament level players, this is a very casual centric chat about the complete video game package, the options for simpler controls, varied amount of gameplay options, and neat little story details have never made it more mesmerizing to attract new fighting game fans. And with the age of social media and incredibly well thought out training modes, it's also incredibly easy to break the barrier from being a beginner level player to a competent one is incredibly easy nowadays. As a complete package, just about every big fighting game release as of late has made sure that they're a good game alongside having competitive death. Or at least, I'd like to believe so. I don't play Mortal Kombat as I'm really sensitive to blood and gore. I hear a lot of bad things about that, but that's not anything I'm personally concerned with. With the wide adoption of rollback netcode, it's never been a better time to get into fighting games as we can have a decent match with people all around the globe thanks to developers abandoning the delay-based architecture for their online play. And if you made it this far, thank you. This was just a little yap by a little old Johnny sharing that, despite some stumbling a bit here and there this generation, overall, I am still absolutely hooked to video games. I'll even go as far as to say, I'm enjoying gaming now more than I ever did before in the past. And that's probably because I'm a happier individual overall nowadays, alongside the quality of the games today are just quite better than before. I still have a large back catalog of games like Cyberpunk, Metaphor, Refantasial, and Baldur's Gate 3 that hopefully someday I get to yap about. Thanks for stopping by and have a wonderful day.